All right, thanks for watching. And today, I want to solve a really, really cool calculus problem that's not very traditional, and you'll see why. So what we want to do today, we want to find the volume of the solid of revolution obtained by rotating the region between y equals to 2 to the minus 1 fourth square root of x and y equals to x, but about a very non-traditional axis namely about y equals to x. And let me draw a little picture of what I mean. So, we have on the one hand the line y equals to x, and we have this function which is basically square root except with another factor. Okay, so this is y equals to 2 to the minus 1 fourth square root of x. And there's a reason we have this factor. It just makes the calculations much nicer. So you could do it without, but then you have some trouble. So what you have then, you have this little region here. And what you want to do is when you want to rotate this region about this axis here. And what you get is just nice, you know, a butterfly shape or something. It looks something like that. This nice almond shaped region. And um, it's basically you rotate it this way. Okay. All right, in fact, there's a little story to that. There's no reason I'm doing this because there was this professor at Berkeley. He actually put this question on the final exam. And he thought it was like very obvious because he thought he would just do this axis minus this axis. But turns out that's not quite true. If you do this axis minus this axis, it's as if you rotate it this way. But this is not what we want to do. We don't want to rotate it this way. We want to rotate it sort of diagonally. So in fact, it's a very non-trivial question and to solve this question, surprisingly, we're going to use some linear algebra. You're like, what? Well, just uh, stick around and we'll see how we do this. So, again, okay, maybe let me redraw a picture without the notation and stuff. So picture again. We have, in this case, just our axis, y equals to x, our function. So this is y equals to 2 to the minus 1 quarter square root of x. And uh, right, this, is, this is that. And then first of all, we have to figure out when they intersect. So note 2 to the minus 1 quarter square root of x equals to x. You square that. So you get x squared equals to x. And then the square of 2 to the minus 1 quarter is 2 to the minus 1 half, which is 1 over square root of 2. And then essentially what you get is that either x equals to 0, or you cancel out x, and you get x equals to 1 over square root of 2. So the point is this point is 1 over square root of 2, and this is 0. And this is y equals to x. What do we want to do? So what do we know in calculus? We know how to calculate you know, volumes of surfaces of revolution where the axis is horizontal or it's vertical. In particular, here the axis is diagonal. So let's see what we can do in order to turn this diagonal axis in a horizontal axis. Well, one thing we can do, notice, and by the way, this works for any axis. doesn't have to be y equals to x. It could be y equals to something else. Well, notice this angle is pi over 4. So let's do something very bold. Let's just rotate the plane by minus pi over 4 so that the, the diagonal line becomes a straight horizontal line. And so what we want to do, we want to take the world, rotate it by minus pi over 4. Whoever says rotation, says rotation matrix. So trick. 
rotate plane by minus pi over 4. So define those new coordinates, x prime, y prime equals to, again, not derivatives of x and y, just two new variables. How do you rotate something by minus pi over 4? You use a rotation matrix. And to find this is just cosine and sine. So cosine of minus pi over 4, sine of minus pi over 4. And the cool thing is you differentiate this. So minus sine of minus pi over 4 and cosine of pi, minus pi over 4 times xy. And then if you calculate that, you get 1 over square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2, uh, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, x, y. In other words, what you're really saying is that this becomes your new x-axis and this becomes your new y-axis. So this becomes x prime and this sort of becomes y prime. But the problem is, well, you can define it, but it doesn't help us unless we actually solve for x and y. But that's not a big problem because uh, we can, if you want, you can just use the inverse matrix to do that. Or you can just solve for it. So, so what you really have here is that you know x prime equals to 1 over square root of 2x plus y. 1 over square root of 2x plus 1 over square root of 2y, and y prime is 1 over square root of 2 minus x plus y. And then if you want, you can just solve for x and y by adding and subtracting, or you can use the inverse matrix, and you should get in the end that x equals to 1 over square root of 2, x prime minus y prime, and y is 1 over square root of 2, x prime plus y prime. It's precisely actually the matrix of pi over 4, not minus pi over 4. Okay, good. So that's, those are your new coordinates if you want. We're really doing a change of coordinates here. And what we want to do next is we want to describe our functions in terms of x prime and y prime. So let's first take our axis. So y equals to x. Well, that becomes 1 over square root of 2. x prime minus y prime equals to 1 over square root of 2. x prime plus y prime. The nice thing is this cancels out. And then you essentially get 2 times 2 over square root of 2 y prime equals to 0 just cancel out the square root of 2. So 2y prime equals to 0. So y prime equals to 0. So here's the cool thing. After you change your variables, your new axis becomes, your uh, line y equals to x becomes a horizontal axis, which is exactly what we have, what we expect, right? If you have y equals to x, and you rotate it by minus pi over 4, then it should give you the horizontal axis. So that's very good. And then let's, let's see what happens to our function. So, sorry about that. Let's see, then y equals to 2 to the minus 1 quarter square root of x. That becomes y squared equals to 1 over square root of x, x. And let's see, let's now use the definition of y. So y squared then becomes 1 half times x prime plus y prime. And then uh, 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2, that becomes 1 half. And then x prime minus y prime. Sorry, I forgot a square here. And this is precisely, I use this ugly factor of 2 to the minus 1 quarter. It's to have this simplification. And then what we get is the following. So we get 
x prime plus y prime squared equals to x prime minus y prime. And essentially what we want to do, and that'll take a, quite a while, uh, we want to solve for y prime in terms of x prime. Just like solving for y in terms of x for functions, so we get y prime squared plus 2x prime y prime plus x prime squared equals to x prime minus y prime. And then, again, we want to solve for y prime. So put, write it as a quadratic form, quadratic formula for y prime. So y prime squared plus 2x prime plus 1 y prime plus uh, x prime squared. Oh, I'm sorry, x prime squared minus x prime. Uh, equals to zero, and then what do we have? We then get that y prime equals to minus 2x prime plus 1 plus or minus square root of 2x prime plus 1 squared minus 4 times this whole jump. minus 4 times x prime squared minus x prime over 2. I know, quite, quite a nightmare, okay? All right, and then what we get is, okay, um, I just <laughs> realized there's a mistake here, but anyway, so minus 2 x prime plus 1 plus or minus, so square root of 4x prime squared plus 4x prime plus 1 minus 4x prime squared uh, plus 4x prime. And the nice thing is this cancels out and it's still over 2. And then we get, let's see, Then we get minus 2 x prime minus 1 plus or minus square root of, let's see, uh, 8 x prime plus 1 over 2. Except the question is, do you do plus or minus? Well, uh, just one little thing. So. Remember before a picture was like that? And well, if you rotate this by minus pi over 4, well, we saw this becomes the line y prime equals to 0. But this thing should be something positive. So in particular, if we have minus, it becomes negative. Because you have minus something minus something that's negative. So indeed, it is the plus part. And then, And then what we get is the following. So that becomes minus x prime minus 1 half plus square root of uh, 2x prime plus 1 quarter. So it's very nice. So what happens here? On the one hand, as I said, our new function becomes y prime equals to 0. And this curvy part now just has the equation y prime equals to minus x prime minus 1 half plus square root of 2x prime plus 1 quarter. We're almost, well, not almost done, but in theory we're almost done. Uh, all we need to also determine are what happens to the endpoints. So, uh, remember before we had the points 0, 0. 
And then remember this was square root of two, sorry, one over square root of two, which means on that diagonal line, we have one over square root of two, one over square root of two. Well, if we wrote it zero, zero, it still becomes zero, zero. And now let's see what happens if we rotate one over square root of two. Well, x prime, again using our formula, that's one over square root of two, x plus y, so one over square root of two plus one over square root of two, which becomes one over square root of two, two over square root of two, which becomes one, and y prime is one over square root of two, one over square root of two minus one over square root of two, which is zero. So in other words, a new point becomes one zero. And now we're back to horizontal calculus land. And now all we need to figure out is what happens when you rotate this function about the axis y equals to zero. And for this, now you can use the disk method. So which says that the answer becomes is pi times integral from zero to one of minus x prime minus one half plus square root of two x prime plus one quarter squared dx. And then you can try to evaluate that. Um, yeah, you can try to evaluate that because you can get rid of x prime and you get pi times 0 to 1 minus x minus 1 half plus square root of 2x plus 1 quarter squared dx. And you can just evaluate that simply by expanding it out and using crazy substitution and we get pi integral from 0 to 1 x plus 1 half minus square root of 2x plus 1 quarter squared dx again you just expand it out use a bunch of substitutions and integration by parts and uh, I was gonna do that but then <laughs> There's a mistake in my notes, so uh, better not embarrass myself. But you can try to expand that, and you should get uh, some answer that indeed gives you the um, volume of the solid obtained by revolving our function across the diagonal line. Whew. So you see, it was way more non-trivial than that professor thought, which, again, I think... I was gonna say it's good to prepare yourself beforehand, but everyone makes, makes mistakes. So uh, even with preparation. All right, so if you like that and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.